Good Monday morning. We're nearing the end of our reading of uh, Understanding Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot. Uh, I think today or tomorrow, well, probably tomorrow, we'll completely finish it up. The only thing left will be the glossary. And I don't think we need to read the glossary. But anyway, uh, after that, we'll... Uh, probably start another another book so we can meet every morning like this anyway I can't believe it's Monday again the weeks are just flying by uh, 2020 is uh, it's probably best we just <laughs> put the entire year behind us but anyway we're at the divinatory meanings of the 56 small cards. And uh, of the, that's the minor arcana. Uh, I'll back up and start it again. It's actually divinatory meanings of the 56 cards of the minor arcana. Uh, and that'll include the court cards too and the aces. So Let's dive into the wands. Ace of Wands. It symbolizes force, strength, rush, vigor, energy, and it governs, according to its nature, the various works and questions. It implies natural as opposed to invoked force. Now, just to remind you, these are all uh, uh, quotes taken from Crowley's own own works on the subject. This isn't uh, Duquette digressions. But I'll go ahead and stick one in <laughs> right now. The aces, just to remind us that the aces and the princesses uh, also rule quadrants of space. Uh, above the, the North Pole. So the ace, along with the princess of wands, uh, rules the uh, quarter of the globe uh, that's roughly Asia. The knight of wands. Now remember in, in old standard decks, what the Thoth Tarot calls the knight of wands is sometimes all called the King of Wands. But in the Thoth deck, it's the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands, he is active, generous, fierce, sudden impetus. If ill dignified, he is evil minded, cruel, bigoted, brutal. Queen of Wands. Adaptability. Steady force applied to an object. Steady rule, great attractive power, power of command, yet like notwithstanding, yet liked notwithstanding. So she's got great attractive power of command, yet she's liked notwithstanding. Kind and generous when not opposed, if ill dignified, obstinate. Revengeful, domineering, tyrannical, and apt to turn against another without a cause. Are you a queen of wands? <laughs> Prince of wands. Swift, strong, hasty, rather violent, yet just and generous, noble and scorning meanness. If ill-dignified, Cruel, intolerant, prejudiced, and ill-natured. Princess of Wands. Brilliance, courage, beauty, force, sudden in anger or love, desire of power, enthusiasm, revenge. If ill-dignified, she is superficial, theatrical, cruel, unstable, domineering. Now let's go into the 
small cards, two of wands. Influence over others, authority, power, dominion. Strength, dominion, harmony of rule of, and of justice, boldness, courage, fierceness, shamelessness, revenge, resolution, generous, proud, sensitive, ambitious, refined, restless, turbulent, sagacious with all, yet unforgiving giving and obstinate. Three of Wands, pride, arrogance, self-assertion. Established force, strength, realization of hope, completion of labor, success after struggle, pride, nobility, wealth, power, conceit, rude self-assumption and insolence, generosity, obstinacy. The Four of Wands. Settlement, arrangement, completion. Perfection or completion of a thing built up with trouble and labor. Rest after labor, subtlety, cleverness, beauty, mirth, success in completion. Reasoning, faculty, conclusions drawn from previous knowledge. Unreadiness, unreliable and unsteady through over-anxiety and hurriedness of action. Graceful in manner, at times insincere, etc. The Five of Wands, Quarreling and Fighting. Violent strife and boldness, rashness, Cruelty, violence, lust, desire, prodigality, and generosity, depending on whether the card is well or ill dignified. The Six of Wands gain. Victory after strife, love, pleasure, gain by labor. Wow, pleasure gained by labor. Wow, that just struck me. Uh, I read that a thousand times. Six of Wands, pleasure gained by labor. Okay, carefulness, sociability, avoiding of strife, yet victory therein. Also insolence and pride of riches and success, etc. The whole depending upon the dignity. Seven of Wands, Opposition, yet Courage. Possible victory depending on the energy and courage exercised. Valor, opposition, obstacles and difficulties, yet courage to meet them. Quarreling, ignorance, pretense and wrangling and threatening. Also, victory in small and unimportant things. An influence upon subordinates. The Eight of Wands. Hasty communications and messages. Swiftness. Too much force applied to suddenly. Very rapid rush, but quickly passed and expended. Violent, but not lasting. Swiftness, rapidity, courage, boldness, confidence, freedom, warfare, violence, love of open air, field sports, gardens and meadows, generous, subtle, eloquent yet somewhat untrustworthy, rapacious, insolent, oppressive, theft and robbery, 
according to dignity. Wow, that's a big, wide spectrum of possible meanings to that card. Nine of Wands. Strength, power, health, recovery from sickness. Tremendous and steady force that cannot be shaken. Herculean strength, yet sometimes scientifically applied. Great success, but with strife and energy. Victory preceded by apprehension and fear. Health, good, and recovery, not in doubt. Generous questioning and curious. Fond of external appearances, intractable, obstinate. Ten of Wands. Cruelty, malice, revenge, injustice. Cruel and overbearing force and energy, but applied only to material and selfish ends sometimes shows failure in a matter and the opposition too strong to be controlled. Arising from the person's too great selfishness at the beginning. Ill will, levity, lying, malice, slander, envy, obstinacy, swiftness in evil and deceit. If ill-dignified, also generously disinterestedness and self-sacrifice when well-dignified. So, you can go either way with that, but if you go bad, <laughs> it's bad. Okay, uh, let's go through the cups. Ace of Cups. Remember, and the Ace of Cups, along with the Princess of Cups, generally rules the area of the Pacific. That's, that's Lawn. That's Lawn's digression there. Back to Crowley. Ace of Cups, it symbolizes fertility, productiveness, beauty, pleasure, happiness, etc. If you're a Knight of Cups, graceful, poetic, Venusian, Indolent, but enthusiastic if roused. Ill-dignified, he is sensual, sensual, idle, and untruthful. Queen of Cups. She is imaginative, poetic, kind, yet not unwilling to take much trouble for another. Coquettish. Good-natured and underneath a dreamy appearance. Imagination stronger than feeling. Very much affected by other influences and therefore more dependent upon the dignity than most symbols. Prince of Cups. My father was a Prince of Cups. He is subtle, violent, crafty, and artistic. A fierce nature with a calm exterior. Powerful for good or evil, but more attracted by the evil if allied with apparent power or wisdom. If ill-dignified, he is intensely evil and merciless. I have to say, as a character description, um, if my father had these, he he did a really good job of overcoming them in life. Princess of Cups. Sweetness, poetry, gentleness, and kindness. Imaginative, dreamy, at times indolent, yet courageous if roused. When ill-dignified, she's selfish and luxurious. Now the small cards, the Two of Cups. Marriage, love, pleasure. 
Harmony of masculine and feminine united. Harmony, pleasure, mirth, subtlety, but if ill-dignified, folly, dissipation, waste, and silly actions. Three of Cups. Plenty, hospitality, eating and drinking, pleasure, dancing, new clothes, merriment. Abundance, plenty, success, pleasure, sensuality, passive success, good luck and fortune. Love, gladness, kindness, liberality. That's my birthday card. Four of Cups. Receiving pleasure or kindness from others, but some discomfort therewith. Success or pleasure approaching their end. A stationary period in happiness, which may or may not continue. It does not mean love and marriage so much as the previous symbol. It's too passive a symbol to represent perfectly completed happiness. Swiftness, hunting and pursuing. Acquisition by contention. Injustice, sometimes. Some drawbacks to pleasure is implied. Five of Cups. Disappointment in love, marriage broken off. Unkindness of a friend, loss of friendship. Death or end of pleasure. Disappointment, sorrow and loss in those things from which pleasure is expected. Sadness, treachery, deceit, ill will, de uh, detraction, clarity and kindness, ill requited, all kinds of anxieties and troubles from unsuspected uh, and unexpected sources. Wow. Crowley also mentioned somewhere, I can't really put my uh, finger on it at, at the moment, but uh, Five of Cups really uh, uh, indicates worry, but, uh, uh, or, or his comment on, on worry itself is, uh, if worry is indicated, uh, it doesn't always mean that there is actually something Something, something to be worried about. Okay, but uh, that's grasping at straws here. Six of Cups. Beginning of a wish, happiness, success, or enjoyment. And, uh, okay, commencements of steady increase. Gain in pleasure, but commencement only. Also, a front detection, knowledge, and in some instances, contention and strife arising from unwarranted self-assertion and vanity. Sometimes thankless and presumptuous, sometimes amiable and patient, according to the dig dignity as usual. Seven of Cups. Debar. Lying, promises, unfulfilled, illusion, deception, error, slight success at outset, not retained. Possible victory, but neutralized by the supineness of the person. Illusionary success, deception in the moment of apparent victory. Lie, error, promise unfulfilled, drunkenness, wrath, vanity, lust, fornication, violence against women, self-dissipation, deception in love and friendship, often success gained but not followed up, modified as usual by dignity. The Eight of Cups. 
Success abandoned. Decline of interest. Temporary success, but without further results. Thing thrown aside as soon as gained. Not lasting, even in the matter at hand. Indolence in success. Journeying from place to place. Misery and repining without cause. Seeking after riches and instability. Nine of Cups. The best freaking tarot card in the freaking deck. <laughs> That's my digression. It's, uh, I'm always happy to see it, though. It's a really good card. Nine of Cups. Complete success, pleasure, and happiness. Wishes fulfilled. Complete and perfect realization of pleasure and happiness, almost perfect self-praise, vanity, conceit, much talking of self, yet kind and lovable, and may be self-denying therewith. High-minded, not easily satisfied with small and limited ideas, apt to be maligned through too much self-assumption, a good and generous, but sometimes foolish nature. Ten of Cups. Matters settled. Complete good fortune. Permanent and lasting success and happiness because inspired from above. Not so sensual as Lord of Material Happiness, yet almost more truly happy. Pleasure dissipation, debauchery, quietness, and peacemaking, kindness, pity, generosity, wantonness, waste, etc., according to dignity. That's a good card, too. Crowley calls it satiety. Well, anyway, that's where we'll stop for today. We'll finish up with the swords and discs uh, uh, tomorrow. And... Uh, so I hope you have a wonderful week, everyone. Get ready for uh, 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 good things to start happening. It's about it's about time. Uh, California is in a uh, a very severe lockdown at the moment. But uh, on my walk this morning, I didn't. Uh, uh, it wasn't particularly uh, empty. There isn't a ghost town out there. Uh, but anyway, let's all do our part. Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. See you tomorrow.